Hi folks, Dan Groninger here for Waygate Technologies, and today I'd like to give you a brief introduction orientation to the USM36 portable flaw detector. Um, we're just going to discuss uh, basic operation of the instrument, how to interact with the menus and so on. Uh, we will leave the ultrasonic application uh, for another time. So to get started, there are two knobs and a collection of buttons on the front face of the instrument that are used to control the instrument. The check buttons on each side both do the same thing. They, they both are used to go in and out of menus. We'll see that in a second. The right knob is mainly used to navigate through menus. The left knob is always dedicated to gain. For the buttons along the bottom, uh, some of these have permanently assigned functions. The one with the snowflake is the freeze button. There's a home button, the power button, and then there are four function keys. So to turn the instrument on, we'll hit the power button. And the instrument will boot up. It'll give us a, a welcome splash screen or two. And then we will launch right into operation. And the instrument will always come back up with the same settings uh, that you had when you last turned it off. Okay. Now, as we mentioned, the left knob is permanently assigned to gain. So anytime you're in this uh, mode where you can see the A scan and you have the menus active, the left knob is always your gain control. Okay. We don't use that for other things. The right knob is used to move from menu to menu along the bottom. Now, with these keys underneath the names of the menus, um, you might infer from that that by pressing one of those buttons it would take you directly to the menu. That is not the case on this instrument. These keys all have uh, reserved functions. Um, in the case of the F1 through F4 keys, uh, they're user assignable. You have a choice of either using them as arrow keys or as function keys that are assigned to things like uh, taking a reading, loading a settings file, that sort of thing. And we'll see how those are set up in a minute. But normally you would navigate from menu to menu with the right knob. Let's say we wanted to change a setting on the pulser menu. We would use the right knob to get the pulser menu, hit the checkbox. That moves the cursor up onto the menu, and now the right knob is selecting a parameter within the menu. Let's say we want to change our pulser width, and we hit the check mark one more time to activate that control, and I can change it to my other setting. Now I can either hit the check mark, which accepts that change and moves me, uh, gives me control to move to a different parameter. Or, even when that is active, I can hit the Home button, and that will take me back down to the menu bar. Let's look at one more thing with uh, adjusting parameter values. This time we're going to go to the Range menu, and we'll look at Range. And you notice Range is spelled out with lowercase letters. Um, you can change Range. Range is one of those parameters that can be changed in different step sizes. When it's in lowercase letters, if I rotate my right knob, I'm going to change in small increments, and I can rotate the knob quickly if I want. Um, there is acceleration on that, so you can move quickly, slowly, but in fine increments. On a parameter like this, the right and left arrow keys actually behave as arrow keys. They don't they behave as function keys when you have a parameter selected. So if I move, if I use the right arrow key, it will snap to the next defined large value. If I go left arrow key, it goes backwards. Okay, it becomes smaller. Now you notice this is, uh, it moves in sort of even logarithmic steps. So if my range is 0.3 and I hit the right arrow, it's gonna go to 0 0.4, 0 0.5, and then it's gonna snap all the way to one. And then it's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 10. So I can move uh, that parameter in large, even steps. And you notice that the parameter name goes to all uppercase um, when I'm moving in that mode. 
if I go to my velocity parameter and select that, I can either adjust the velocity in small increments or by using the right and left arrow keys, I can parse through a list of materials and see the, the known or stored uh, velocity for that material. So with the right and left arrows, I can you know, say select mild steel, shear velocity, and then if I am unhappy with that value, I can change it in small amounts and it goes back to custom. So that's just another way to adjust the parameter values, either in small increments with the right knob or by using when the parameter is selected using the right and left arrow keys. Okay. So home always takes you home. Check mark is used to select. So let's select receiver menu, go to rectification. Let's go to full wave rectification. And then I can go right back to home, back to my bottom menu. Now there's one more little complication. If we go to some of the menus have multiple levels. So if we go to the gates menu and activate that, now I'm on the gates menu and I can select between the three gates. So each gate it has basically the same set of parameters for it. So the gates menu further breaks down into gate A, gate B, gate C. And let's say we want to go into gate B and make that a little wider. I can select gate B and go to gate B width and I can make gate B wider. Now if I press home, it'll take me back to the gate ABC selection. If I press home again, it takes me back out to the front. Now with the, the instrument is in uh, the ultrasonic display mode, you're out front and you can see the A scan. Sometimes you'd like to see the A scan large and full screen. Um, right now we're in the home mode, so we're down at our, our menu bar. If I hit both of the check marks at the same time, it will expand the A scan to full screen. So I'll see my readings at the top and I will see the A scan more or less full screen. The menus are hidden. If I press both check marks again, and it's a press and hold. You need to press and hold them both, but that will bring the menus back. The A scan gets a little smaller. So again, press and hold, full screen, press and hold, back to normal. The most commonly used parameters for controlling the ultrasonic setup of the instrument are here on these menus underneath the A scan. So these are all things that you might want to adjust while you're watching an actual ultrasonic signal to help you make your decision about your adjustment. There are many other parameters that are kept on what we call the back menus. And to go to the second level or the back menus, you do a long press on the home button. Okay. Now, once you're back here and the A scan is out of sight, you can't see ultrasonic parameters anymore. Now we use the left knob for something a little bit different. The left knob will move the highlighter, will move the cursor from column to column within the menus. And we notice there are many menus. So as we move with the left knob from column to column, when we get to the right edge of the screen and we go one more tick, it moves to the next menu and we can keep going like that. So this is how you move from one menu to another in the back menus. And when you get to the menu that you want, you can move within that menu using the right knob. So just like before, we would go with the right knob to select a particular parameter. Um, and these can be used in combination at any point. You know, you can use the, the left knob to move directly from column to column. The right knob will move up and down, and when you get to the last parameter on a menu, it will jump to the next menu. And if we go back, just the same. Okay. Uh, if we find a parameter that we would like to adjust in the back, um, again, check mark selects the parameter. Right knob adjusts the value of the parameter up and down, and check gets us back out of the parameter and we can start moving again. Okay. 
Now, uh, we talked about these function keys a little bit. If we go to config three, there are four function keys here. You can select what function you want it to uh, activate when you hit a particular function key. Um, copy is used to uh, save data sets. Um, you can recall data. Uh, there are a whole range of functions that you can choose from here. There's one more parameter that controls that. That is the function key here. And you have a choice of those being either functions or arrows. If you set this to arrows, this will be up, down, left, right in terms of movement uh, around the menus and so on. If you have them set to function, the key will perform whatever function you have selected here on this menu. Okay. And then to get back out to the, the main screen, just like we did a long press on home button to come into these back menus, we do a long press on the home key to come back out. All right. And that's the basic operation of the USM 36. Uh, again, I'm Dan Groninger for Waygate Technologies. Uh, thank you for joining me.